Hi, my name is Silafire, and I wanted to post an update on my green circuit production. But before I do that, I wanted to give you guys an outline of what the goals and the rules of this base are. The first rule being that logistic robots are not used in production anywhere, uh, other than in a mall, so that you can collect um, all of your personal needs. Um, the second rule being that all production will be done strictly through trains. Uh, here it's mined and smelted directly before going on to trains for green circuits. Here we have about one and a half thousand uh, potions per minute. Um, the uh, goal of this base is to launch 30 rockets a minute. Um, and up here we have the low density structure production to, to supply that. Here's a prototype for rocket control units uh, and it's completely supplied. Uh, uh, it'll be expanded to have uh, three or so uh, modules up here. Uh, uh, this here is the rocket fuel production. And then on the right here, uh, I'm making the green circuit production. And reds are up here. Blues are up here at the moment. The... I, I then made a secondary goal of making 12 belts of blue circuits because at the time I thought 12 belts was uh, the uh, most that you can get into a 1x4 train. Turns out that you can load 16 belts into a 1x4 train. Um, so I do end up expanding that goal but not until uh, after uh, uh, version one is complete. Um, the only th other thing that I will want to say about this base is that it was done before train stop limits were introduced. Uh, this was before the 1.1 update and um, hence why no stops have any station limits. Um, I used these splice trains here as a, a good way to buffer so that uh, uh, the train network could be really saturated, but they wouldn't all just turn straight into here if there was, say, three or four uh, um, uh, stations of, or spaces available in the waiting bay. You see, this isn't really great. Uh, but uh, the, the large waiting bay on these supply stations did help that. Anyway, let's uh, go over to what uh, version 1 looks like. Here we are 800 hours later, and while we're voiding green circuits, we have a solid line of production at 509k a minute. Uh, only half of this is running. Uh, this here was more of a prototype for this. I did have to completely rip apart this intersection and even put an express for uh, these iron up here. Uh, spoiler, I had to do this again later. Um, but this here is the completed version one. Uh, here I even have uh, the supply of the splice stations and the amount of the the stations picking up. These are garbage uh, green circuit factories, but this is still just version one. The prototype for version two is over here. Um, and the prototype for version two of the reds is also here. Um, over here, I have 288 belts of plastic and 
12 cells. Over here is 72 belts of red circuits. Uh, there's the splice station there. And over here is 12 belts of blue circuits. Uh, this still has a lot of optimizing uh, to go through. Next, I wanted to show you guys the rocket silo. Here we have 48 rocket silos launching about 30 rockets a minute. And over a 10 hour period, that is very stable. Uh, the rocket parts are all shipped up here, and these tracks do not overlap. On the left here, we have low density structures, and low density structures are done by using light loaded trains, meaning that the ratioed resource is exact for the production here. And once they are empty, they will come down this track and go back and pick up from each of the supply stations. Next on the right here, we have modules. Modules are done very similarly in the uh, train station production area. Uh, it is still supplied with a supply station here with red and green circuits. Those modules then come up here. This is the secondary pickup for rocket control units. Rocket control units will come through here, again into these low, denser, low density structure style bays with these light loaded trains. Once these light loaded trains are empty, they will enter the main track, come down all the way to blue circuits, and then they will go all the way back up. Instead of coming up that right track, they go up the middle one, and then up this line to modules. This could be completely cut out by putting a splice station here, uh, dropping off blue circuits so that this here would be completely self-contained and these rocket control unit trains would not enter the main line. Uh, just south of that is the rocket fuel. The rocket fuel is done making two lines of solid fuel that's all consumed into rocket fuel. It is done via coal cracking. And I also output spare petroleum. This could probably just be cracked down into solid fuel as well, but I feel it's probably more useful going into plastic. There are 40 of these cells. The traffic for the rocket control units is pretty unique in that the rocket fuel all has to go up and then to the left on a dedicated track down here and empties. And as we come back, we enter this line here and we go up and we'll split left or right and then back up these lines. These also require coal and these coal trains are on the same track, but they function very differently. They come up here, uh, and then they will turn to the right, and they will come down, and they will enter this uh, export line for these empty coal trains, and they will come and then fill at various um, coal stations, one, two, three, Then they head back up there. I've cut off the um, return lines so that all traffic is forced to go up. That, that does it for the, the rockets. Uh, very nice completed.
project. Now we'll jump over to my version two of uh, Green Circuits. And finally, this here is version two of Green Circuit Production. This here makes 256 belts for a total of 691k a minute. When I was designing this, I used the biggest uh, junction that I could find, this parallel multicross by Ivana, but I was running into issues with traffic congestion. I tried many things to try and simplify the traffic. Originally, all the iron and the copper trains were mixing and then using a junction to uh, figure out which side they would go on. So I changed that. I segregated these here. I then even segregated the uh, um, iron and the copper stations. They used to run on one coming down with a single buffer. I changed it so that the input would come in from the left, and instead of the uh, empty trains outputting back through here, they would output uh, at the top and at the bottom, but it still didn't uh, do enough to get this junction to work. I then also got something very nice from Ivana, who I contacted directly, who uh, then told me that uh, just the amount of trains that I was trying to fit on one line uh, was capping out. So I think it's about 32 or 34 trains a minute that can supply on one train. So the, this top line, the iron, probably would have been fine with uh, when it was saturated, but this copper line, 35 a minute, just blows it out. Um, so it wasn't going to be possible. Uh, so uh, copper is on this bottom one. Iron is on this top. They now have their own line. Iron comes up the top. Copper comes down the bottom. They come in here, unload at 16 belt stations, and just filter the airway up. And at the moment, they're being voided. And these green circuit trains don't interact with uh, the green circuit supply trades at all. Now for this export of these trains, the empty trains, for copper up here, copper will come down this express line all the way to the end. And then it comes down, it splits into two here, so that when we come down and we cross these upcoming iron trains, we can do it faster. And then it has a, an express right down the bottom and comes down its own line. This lower uh, copper line has its own express up the top here. And same with the iron. The iron has an express uh, going up and it's on this top line. Then we go up and we split into two. We cross so we can get there faster. And then we have this top express line that comes over. And then this sort of middle express line bringing the other iron. I had a bit of an issue because they were so close. They were jamming. They don't have like a, a long escapement around here. Just a teeny tiny section there. Now, at the moment, this is all done with uh, cheaty chests and cheaty ore patches. But now that the project is properly completed. So the future plan for this is that 
I will condense this middle section. Then I will rotate this and plonk another one down. The ore will input from the right, come into the middle here, and then go down. And then all of the export will go down and to the right. Then there will be another cell up the top. Again, all the input will come from the middle on the right, go up and through everything. And then the empty trains will go up through the top and out to the right. I intend to legitimize the, the second version of this, so there'll be no cheaty chests or cheaty patches. All of the mines will extend out this way, and there'll be uh, a 16-track highway coming in here. It'll be two separate eight lanes uh, solely to collect uh, ore. It's going to be... A little interesting because I in plan to do left hand drive for the top and then right hand drive for the bottom. So the bottom will be right hand drive. So the supply trains will come in through the the top, and then they'll they'll come drop everything in, go back up, and then it'll go out to the right underneath the import line. So they'll have easy. Uh, access to go down to, to the, these branched mines. And then up north, it'll be the opposite. Uh, it'll be on left-hand drive, so it'll be on the inside. It'll go up, out, and down, and then it'll go out on the north side. So that is the plan for Green Circuits version 3. Beyond that, the plan is to upgrade these red circuits that are 12 belt splice stations and upgrade them to these new 16 belt heavy loaded train stations, single loaded trains. Uh, this output 16 belts. Then over to blues. These are very inefficient. There's so many redundant splitters and so many undergrounds. Uh, this is the new design. Uh, this took a long time to, to, to work out. It is uh, very uh, lane splicey. Uh, this top one has a double belt of reds, and it'll be pulled off the whole way down. Uh, but then this green one, this blue belt, will have... Uh, will be being pulled off and then we will siphon down the line. After this third one, they get starved, so we siphon here, we go another three down, it siphons the next one, we go another three down, we go another three down, we go another three down, and we go another three down, it all siphons up to the top. And it outputs one solid blue belt. Uh... After that, being upgraded to 16 belts, I want to change the modules uh, to remove the supply station and change rocket control units so that there'll be uh, single resource heavy loaded trains, uh, very much sort of a similar system uh, here instead of uh, the old way of uh, one wagon per one assembler. It'll be uh, outputting as much as possible onto the line. The the main base here that does about 2k potions, I don't think I'm going to touch it. Uh, at least not for a long time. Well, that is pretty much it for my base and my current projects. I could uh, go on to show you some of my potion base and the old base structures and the new one with the waiting bay. Uh, I could even go and load up some old saves and show you the first version that lacked all of this. I can go far enough back and show you the uh, first version of uh, blue circuits, one belt of blue circuits that fed that uh, system up here. 
And oh, this is a whole video on its own. Uh, I updated low density structures. What are all these flashing lights for? Why is there three train stops here? If uh, anyone's interested in seeing more of uh, this base, I'd love to show it. Uh, let me know if there's something specific about my base that I didn't explain well or that you'd like uh, a deeper dive on, and I'd uh, be happy to do it. All right. Thanks for watching.